Christianity Today is called John Sherrill and His Wife, the most influential Christian authors you know nothing about. But their books captured the imagination of people in the 1960s and beyond, contributing greatly to a spiritual awakening when the world was otherwise wondering if God was dead. Welcome to Wait Till You Hear This. I'm Steve Eastman. The reason you may never have heard of John Sherrill was that his name was rarely featured on book covers. He was just a step above a ghostwriter. You usually had to look closely for the small print to learn that he and his wife Elizabeth crafted the stories more commonly associated with better-known names. You know, it seems everyone knows that David Wilkerson wrote The Cross and the Switchblade, that Brother Andrew wrote God Smuggler, and that Corey Ten Boom wrote The Hiding Place. But those Christian classics may never have reached a wide audience without the help of the Sherrills. John was an editor at Guideposts, an ecumenical magazine that is generally considered to be inspirational, but not spiritually earth-shaking, like the books he would eventually write. By the way, John's writings have affected my life. And who could not be affected by The Cross and the Switchblade, later made into a movie starring Pat Boone? When gang leader Nicky Cruz threatens country preacher David Wilkerson with a knife, we hear that unforgettable comeback. You could cut me up into a thousand pieces and lay them in the street, and every piece will still love you. God Smuggler has a romantic quality to it, as it tells how Andrew Vanderbilt met his wife and started a ministry. Brother Andrew smuggled Bibles behind the Iron Curtain starting in the 1950s. The book records how he would pray. Lord, in my luggage I have scripture that I want to take to your children across this border. When you were on earth, you made blind eyes see. Now I pray, make seeing eyes blind. And border guards would open Andrew's suitcases and fail to see Bibles inside. As for the hiding place, it tells the story of a Nazi concentration camp survivor who learned to overcome hate and became known as a minister of love. This book also became a motion picture. In 1964, John Sherrill wrote about his own experiences as a reporter researching the rumors of a Book of Acts-style revival spreading across America. Let me read a few lines from They Speak with Other Tongues. I couldn't tell whether service was actually in progress or not. The congregation seemed expectant, intent, and yet there didn't seem to be a leader or any set order of worship. A woman in the row ahead of us suddenly spoke aloud. Blessed Jesus, she crooned in a voice that was almost singing, and from all over the church came little sighs of agreement. The African-American woman beside us had been sitting with her head raised, eyes tight shut. Now her hands slowly lifted until they were stretched above her head, palms upward. And you know, John ended up experiencing a Book of Acts-style revival in his own life and many were inspired by his example. John Sherrill passed away Saturday, December 2nd, at age 94, at his home near Boston. He and Elizabeth were a few weeks short of celebrating their 70th anniversary. This is Steve Eastman for Wait Till You Hear This. Discover more stories like this one on our website, waittillyouhearthis.com. 